Today, I get to interview Keith about a post he recently uh, wrote on his blog, Gospel Renewal, and it's all about what do we do with disillusionment. Today, um, I get to be in the seat that interviews Keith about a post that he just uh, posted recently on Gospel Renewal, and I love it when he's able to just get time to um, process some big concepts on his um, his blog because he just is able to articulate what all of us are struggling with or dealing with, and he really hit it. Um, hit a home run with this blog post and I just know it's going to resonate with many of us. It resonated with me and that's on disillusionment. And so before I get started, um, Keith, why don't you, why don't we just kick start by you explaining what do you mean by disillusionment? What is that? Sure. Yeah. Well, the Oxford dictionary defines disillusionment as the disappointment you feel when something that you believe you're lit down by that so mm -hmm. the uh, reality of something becomes more difficult than what you assume that it is going to be mm -hmm. and so you become disillusioned by it and so uh, disillusionment comes in lots of different mm -hmm. forms in our lives we experience it in a lot of different ways uh, you know this whole uh, Ferguson home video channel has been born out of our marriage ministry at our church and we've seen a lot of people disillusioned in their marriage because they thought marriage was going to be one thing. They had this picture of marriage, and then they got into marriage. And you and, don't know what to do when they, it hits you. Totally, and they face disappointment because there was a gap between what they expected it to be mm -hmm. and what it actually was. And so a lot of the questions and things we've done on this channel have been about dealing with disillusionment in marriage, but I've just sensed that uh, there's a lot of Christians today who are struggling mm -hmm. uh, with disillusionment and just felt kind of compelled to write about it and think about it. And I've struggled with it in my own life, mm -hmm. to be honest. Yeah, and I've seen that as your wife. Um, and yeah, you mentioned three in particular in your blog post. So mm -hmm. why don't you um, really quickly just say those three and then I'll ask you questions about them. Sure. Well, the, the things that I most commonly... Um, hear from people about is disillusionment with the church, mm -hmm. um, uh, disillusionment with themselves and a struggle they have in their life, um, and then ultimately a, being disillusioned with God. Hmm. Okay, so let's go on the first one, Disillus dis blah, blah, blah. <laughs> disillusionment with the church. Mm -hmm. um, and that is interesting, seeing as you're a pastor. And I'm a pastor's wife, but it's real, and we have felt that um, at different times throughout our ministry, um, but specifically in this season. Mm -hmm. So give, give me one way that you have been disillusioned with the church. Well, for me personally, um, I think I've, I've been disillusioned because um, I have felt like Christians have not responded real well to the pandemic over the last year. Mm -hmm. I think people have responded out of a lot of frustration and anger mm -hmm. uh, rather than compassion and empathy. Mm -hmm. And so I've been disillusioned because I kind of expected Christians to lead the charge in caring for our neighbor mm -hmm. and loving others. But I just felt a lot of Christians were really coming at it from a position of their rights and mm -hmm. their kind of personal desires of what they wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was disillusioned by that, you know, but um, you know, I think I, I hear from Christians who are disillusioned with the church, um, not just because of issues like that, but just because of being hurt. You know, I mean, a lot of people um, articulate the pain that they've experienced in the church, you know, through uh, church leaders, through um, somebody in the church. And so I think people with disillusion because they, they expect Christian people to act one way. Mm -hmm. Uh, to kind of follow the way of Jesus and the way we love each other. And so when you're a new Christian and you're coming into the church, there's these high expectations that like, we're going to get along, we're going to love each other, this is going to be my family, we're going to serve one another. And then to go through conflict and division and even just to experience betrayal and hurt and gossip mm -hmm. and all those things within the church can be very disillusioning. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been disillusioned seeing so many 
prominent evangelical leaders have moral failures. Mm -hmm. And so I've questioned like, okay, this gospel they proclaim, Mm -hmm. you know, and they're speaking for all of us. And yet like they're living like two different lives. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what, what do we really, you know, what truth are we basing our life on? And is it really changing lives? I don't know. I've just been really disillusioned with the church in general because of how many leaders are falling. Sure. Um, But okay. So on to the next one. We're going to link to his blog post, and I really encourage all of you to get on there because there's a lot more detail. And yeah, all I mean, I give kind of under each point like four or five suggestions mm-hmm. on how to deal with these, this mm-hmm. disillusion. So we don't want to just say to you, like, here's why we're disillusioned. Like, we have to work through that disillusionment mm-hmm. into a place of being good with the church and with God and with other people and with ourselves. And there's a way to do that, but it takes some work. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, I'll just mention one on the disillusionment of the church. If you've been hurt uh, within the church, it, it's really important that you work through the process of forgiveness. Yeah. Um, and so that's there's kind of again like there's a lot on my blog post about dealing with disillusionment mm-hmm. with the church, but don't stay in that disillusionment mm-hmm. because what will happen is that will turn to bitterness mm-hmm. and turn to isolation and withdrawal from the church, mm-hmm. which has really negative consequences for you. Yeah, and and this leads to your next disillusionment. Mm-hmm. Really, because we can easily get disillusioned with others when they hurt us, but it's so easy to kind of ignore the fact that we hurt others. And so um, walk us through that because once we do recognize our own sin, we can just be disillusioned with ourselves. Well, and that's, yeah, that's kind of the other side of the coin. We're talking about the things other people do to us, but we also know if we're honest that one of the things that really disillusions us is we come into the Christian faith when we're first converted. We, we repent, we believe, and we hear this language about the old is gone, the new has yeah. come, I've been given a new heart, I'm born again. Mm-hmm. And so it creates a lot of hope within mm-hmm. us that the things that have held us down, the destructive patterns, the sins, the habits in our lives that have hurt us, we're going to finally get away from mm-hmm. those things. And it doesn't take very long within the Christian journey to realize that those temptations, those sins, those habits are still there. Mm -hmm. And maybe we are even more, because the spirits within us, we're even more aware that they're there Mm -hmm. than we were before. Mm -hmm. Um, But we don't change as fast as we think we should change. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, I've been a Christian 25 years now, and I can see growth. I can see Mm -hmm. progress. I praise God for that. But I also see some patterns and some Mm -hmm. sin in my life that is hard for me to shake. It's Mm -hmm. hard for me to move past. And I have seasons where I do well with it and then I fall back into sinful patterns. And so I have to repent all over again. So I think that process is really hard for Christians to deal with. Uh, because their expectations are like, I'm a follower of Jesus. He's in my life. The Spirit's controlling my life now. And so I'm going to walk in freedom. Mm -hmm. And we've got a whole recovery ministry at our church because there's so many Christians who are not walking in freedom, you know? I mean, uh, just just trapped in addictions. And that can be very discouraging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, it can be be big things. It can be the small daily things. Mm -hmm. Like, I can get really disillusioned myself on just the ability to have self-control in in what I eat or how I spend money on Mm -hmm. little things that I don't even need, but I can't say no to myself, you know, and do it. So I, you know, I can have days of victory and then I can have days where I just am really down on myself Mm -hmm. and like, Barry, you're never going to get it together. Um, and I for you know, I forget those, the passages, like it's for freedom that, um, that Christ died, you know, mm-hmm. for freedom, we've been set free. And, um, anyways, I just yeah. forget those things. And, yeah. yeah. So that, I think that can really discourage us, uh, not just the things other people have done to us, but just the feeling of being stuck in areas. And so then, like we said, that leads, both of those things ultimately lead to the third mm-hmm. area of disillusionment, which is to me kind of the major area. And that's disillusionment with God. Mm-hmm. Because it becomes what you said at the beginning when you said, when I hear a Christian leader that I've listened to, I've learned from, preach the Bible and, and teach God's word and share the gospel mm-hmm. with me. And I've, I've learned so much and then I see them fall morally mm-hmm. or... I see myself fall back into a sinful pattern that I have been experiencing freedom from. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I begin to question God. Mm -hmm. You know, like we just said, God, are you real? 
Is this gospel that we believe, is it really transformative? Does it really change? Is this Bible that we say we believe, does it really change us? And so we just begin to feel a little bit disillusioned with God. And I would just say, you know, of the three that I wrote about, I think that's the biggest issue. It's the heart level issue underneath the other ones. And I, uh, but it's so important. Well, yeah, and I, I think all of us, you know, I love, I love your... Um, just passion to be authentic and real as a pastor. And I think for a lot of us, there's freedom in that of helping us to articulate our disillusionment with God. Mm -hmm. Like to hear a pastor say, I get disillusioned with God, sure. mm -hmm. to me is really just kind of freeing for a lot of us. Like, okay, I can, I can voice that and have people pray for that. But give us, I know you gave more encouragement on your blog post. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, go read that because it'll minister to your heart, I know. But give us one quick encouragement if we find ourselves right now in a place of just being really disillusioned with the Lord. Well, I would say what you just said, like, I would just give you scriptural warrant for that. And that is that you're not alone mm -hmm. in feeling disillusioned. Mm -hmm. Like even the Psalmist David in Psalm 13, he says, how long Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Like obviously he was struggling mm -hmm. with unanswered prayer, with God's timing, and he was disillusioned with God because things were not going the way he wanted them to go, the way he wanted God to move in a certain situation. And so, again, I hope I'm encouraging people by saying I struggle with that, but I'm, in, I'm encouraged because the Bible talks about that. It, you know, here's King David, this man after God's own heart, and he's talking about being disappointed, disillusioned with God. Mm -hmm. So all that to say is you're not alone. Mm -hmm. But second of all, I just want to remind you, Isaiah 55, 8, 9 talks about how God says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. As, as far as the heavens are from the earth, so are my ways higher than yours. And so just remind, reminding ourselves that like, we don't understand everything that God's doing, um, but God is still in charge. He's still on the throne, and we can trust him. And even in Psalm 13, when he gets to the end of this psalm, he says, but I've trusted in your faithful love. My heart will rejoice in your deliverance. And so even in the midst of his disillusionment, he's reminding himself that he really does trust mm -hmm. God. And I just want to encourage you, if you're in that place of disillusionment with God right now, one, you'd be honest with God. Yeah. Two, you'd be honest with somebody else. And three, you would just remember that God is with you and that he loves you and you can trust him even in the midst of feeling disillusioned with him and understanding that there's just things that he's doing. He sees things, he understands things that we don't mm -hmm. and we have to trust him and what he's doing in the big picture. Yeah, and I would just encourage you, you know, I think so often disillusionment can lead to us just wanting to give up. Whether that give up on somebody else, give up on the church, like I don't need the church to have my spiritual right. life, right. give up on myself, you know, which can lead to, you know, extreme depression and suicide, give up on mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. God and say, I just don't want anything to do with the faith. And I would just encourage you that none of those are the answers. Mm -hmm. Like that's not going to um, help you. Mm -hmm. um, and so I always tell my my kids all the time like you can do hard for a season mm. to deal with hard stuff you can do it for a season like yeah. we um we're equipped to do hard and i think we're so we so try to make our lives comfortable and protected that when we hit a hard season we kind of panic mm -hmm. you know but to just settle in and be okay with that and wrestle with the lord but don't give up yeah keep going and keep what he said keep pursuing the lord keep um, pursuing community and um, show yourself so much grace yeah and i think our heart like we have dealt with this illusion mid this last 18 months has been hard on everybody mm -hmm. Um, but I think we really feel a heart for young people, you know, mm -hmm. right now, teenagers, college students, yeah. young adults, who we keep reading about and hearing from who are uh, going through these kind of deconversion experiences, growing up in the church, hearing about Christ, but then leaving the faith because they're disillusioned. Mm -hmm. And I think that was also kind of what birthed this blog post and this video was to say, I just want to say to you, if you're a young person watching this, exactly what Barry's saying, like be honest about your disillusionment, but don't throw out the whole faith because of it. Yeah. Like Christ will meet you in that disillusionment. And I just want to encourage you, like, you know, Christ himself was in that moment in the Garden of Gethsemane where he was struggling with God's will for his life and what he was going to do. And it was difficult for him. And so all that to say, like, 
he went through that. We're going to walk through that Garden of Gethsemane mm -hmm. kind of period of our life. Yeah. Um, but we know that God is faithful and he's with us and he loves us. And so I just want you to know that. And we're here to talk to you. If you're feeling disillusioned uh, by Christianity, by the Christian church, like we want to talk to you about it. We would love to discuss it with you and just encourage you in your faith. So we love you. We're praying for you. And we hope this video and my blog post just helps you to move forward from your disillusionment to a place of really trusting God.